Hello, this is Daniel Thomasandra Daly. This is a Noel Hyde sermon. Wealth brings pride. Humble yourself with scripture and the wealth will continue. Wealth brings pride. Humble yourself with scripture and the wealth will continue. Okay, now, all right, <clears throat> when I was young, um, well, back in Baradale days when I was very young, obviously uh, it was the 1970s, and Dad was not, not rich, but it wasn't poor. Um, our family was, wasn't rich, but we weren't poor. We, uh, we had a house, um, in Ben Street in Baradale. Catholic family and was five kids. And, uh, <clears throat> it, Dad had gotten a loan from, I think, from, from family members, um, before the house. And, um, brothers, I think, and, um, he had eight brothers and two sisters. And, um, paid that, he paid that money back when he got a superannuation in the mid-1980s. So that, that was paid back, that, that loan. So it was a responsible man. But, um, we weren't rich, but we weren't poor. Uh, we weren't on Poverty Street. We were, uh, Oh gosh, um, probably about standard middle class, maybe um, within the spectrum of middle class. Um, he worked for the postmaster generals, the official name of the department, I think, in telecom, and um, he'd uh, he'd had other jobs before that. But, um, worked on the Snowy Mountains, not on the Snowy Mountains scheme itself, but, uh, sort of, I think, actually, um, doing, doing, doing work, not on the scheme, I don't think he was building anything, but it was doing work related to the scheme, involved with the scheme, standard telecommunications work. Um, so it was doing telecom work. But related to the when the snowman scheme was going on, when it was going on, he was involved. So, um, sort of related, but wasn't directly on the snowy scheme itself, not the Snow Mountains Engineering Corporation or anything like that. It was Telecom, Postmaster Generals, and um, it worked at that time when snow was going on, doing things. He might have done things like maybe laying cables. I don't really think he did lay any cables. It was probably just exchange work and bits and pieces of stuff I'd imagine, I'm not really sure. I never really got the whole story on all the activities he did, he didn't really relate to But um, he earned, I remember about mid-1980s, I saw a pay packet of his, uh, the pay price once, um, just so I happened to see it. And um, I think I think I was actually at Telecom itself, I was given, given it by a bloke, because I was waiting for Dad, and um, his boss I think handed it to me or something, I think that's the story, I'm not 100% sure. And I just glanced at the amount, or it might have been some other time. But it was about 700 odd dollars, Australian dollars, was the pay packet. And that could have been before or after tax. I don't really know for sure. But what I can tell you now, that that was about, back in about, probably, it was when I was in high school, I think. So it was probably about, probably about 86, somewhere around there, 87. Somewhere around there, not, not really sure. But at, the, at that time, that was a, uh, Oh, I don't know, I mean, early 90s when I'm in ASO 1 and 2, I'm earning about 20 odd thousand, and that's about 800 I was earning, and so 
It was probably on the equivalent of about an ASO three or something like that. ASO four maybe. He was it was a, a standard sort of middle class sort of wage that Dad was earning. Maybe lower middle, maybe middle middle. I doubt that it was upper middle, but uh, it would, probably would have thought it, it wasn't a poverty class. Is what I'm saying. It was sort of middle class wage. We uh, we the family owned a home. We'd moved from Berrydale to Coomer in the 1980s, and we owned a home on Bradley Street. And like the Coom Berrydale house, it was a standard three bedroom house uh, above, which in England they call bungalows, I think. And um, we weren't in any repayment scheme. The money was paid later, as I said, in the mid-1980s when he got his superannuation payout, pay back his family then, as far as I understand. Now, with that money, Dad, Mum did a lot of the spending, of course, but um, they bought the food for the family, the clothes for the family, and presents for us at Christmas especially, we'd get, um, I remember in the 1970s we'd get pillow cases full of our presents, not little stockings but big pillow cases and we'd get a fair few presents, it wasn't just a present or two, we'd get a chunk of stuff. And army men strings to fall for little, little jigsaws and bionic men and all sorts of things, I remember a test match in the 1980s the board game test match, uh, which was a little cricket board game, and uh, it was Meccano and all sorts of things. And uh, in in the mid nineteen eighties, I got Oz Study, and I was be able to buy. I got sixty dollars a fortnight on Oz Study, and uh, I'd spend that on records mostly. And I'd get Oz Study from then on for a number of years until I went on to the doll, and then words and uh, DSP later on. But, of course, growing up, I had my standard toys and things and books and things and a tiny little amount of music which my parents bought me, a tape cassette and um, some blank tape cassettes and not much of music, but I had plenty of toys and uh, I, I'd read a lot of fantasy books. We'd given some from a friend of a family and i buy them at the news agents and bookstores and stuff. But by the time we've moved to Canberra in 1990 and I've studied and studied and left the church and become an agnostic but returned to the church for the Catholic Church for a while then got his house. By the time I've gotten to Potter's house, after all the depression and early schizophrenia I'd been through, the amount of possessions that had built up, especially comic collections and music collections, was actually quite large. Because um, I earned, uh, well, I didn't really earn, I was earning at Potter's House days by working. But um, I had a reasonably good disposable income from my study and the doll and things and stuff I was doing. And uh, I'd pay my basic rent uh, to the group house and Potter's House days and so forth. And I'd, I'd, I would, every week without fail, go to the stores and buy stuff. I was a big collector. Um, and that sort of started in 87 when I'd collect news agents, uh, comics from news agents and Kuma, personal news agents. And then after a bit, collect CDs and stuff. And it's never really stopped. And, um,. I'm on a disability support pension now. I worked for four years in the public service, and in that time I was a Christian for most of it, and uh, I'd collect Christian CDs, actually. Um, I'd, gotten, I'd gotten rid of... At Potter's House days, what, what had happened is that went up to Red Hill... Uh, not Red Hill, the um, Mount Taylor, near Pierce, where Potter's House was located. We were in a group house. And I destroyed... Burnt up all my comic collections. And by then, I think all my metal CDs and collections had been destroyed by myself as well, or something like that. And I, I, out of all went, destroyed it all. Humbled myself, and I did a lot of fasting in Potter's House in the following year in UPC. And the scripture says, "Humble yourself with fasting." And all the old stuff went out, 
and new stuff came in. So all my prizes and all my glories were destroyed and started again. And since that time, I, I, do, I have done it traditionally on habit from time to time. Turf for lot after having built up for a few years a whole stack of stuff and uh, started again. But in latter times, it wasn't so much anymore out of the old invention. It was just, it was sort of sacrifice to heaven. Okay. Putting that stuff aside for later on in life, because what you acquire in life, you acquire in life for eternity. But one thing it's done over and over again has kept me humble enough. My brother died a few years back and he was arrogant because he had a, had a bit of wealth which had built up and it didn't take much for Matthew Daly to be a bit arrogant. Because when you get too proud with too much possessions your time expires. This is what God said to me the other day in the other room. When you have a certain amount of wealth which you've accumulated in life, you become a bit too proud. That's enough for you. Your time's up. He's taking you to the great beyond. That's what you earned. Off you go. Wealth brings pride. Just just earlier, I was boasting a bit to God and stuff, and mockering and things like that. And I, uh, yesterday, I had humbled myself by reading more scripture and I'd humble myself. And I said, yeah, I'll humble myself. But um, it came in again because God's punishing me now with some pain, which I'm going through, suffering on my leg. For the comic order which is coming in, which is a full month's supply of DC Comics. It's um, like 70 comics, because there's, there's a few extras and things. And uh, that much wealth which comes in all at once, there's a lot of pain which comes in with acquisition of wealth. And when with and pain because of the pride. And when you have a lot of wealth, you get a lot of pride, and that's when God wants to knock you off and it sends a lot of pain your way, and off you go to the great beyond at a certain point. And especially if you accumulate it quickly and you, you buy all the time, don't expect to last much. Unless you humble yourself. It's a thing I've finally learned. When I get stuck into listening to the King James Version of early Genesis chapters on YouTube, when I go over half a dozen chapters, pain starts diminishing a bit, and I've noticed my pride and arrogance starts to diminish. When you go over the script, you can do it with fasting as well. I did a lot of fasting at one point in life. But when you go through the Bible and read the chapters or listen to it and take note when you're listening, just not, don't ignore it. You have to listen to all of it. You have to pay attention. The scripture sinks in and it sanctifies you again. And if you stay humble, you don't become proud because of your wealth. And if you don't become proud because of your wealth, on goes your life. So when, when the Psalter, David, promises technically in one of the Psalms, sort of, life goes on forever if you keep the Lord's commands. If you, if you observe the word of the Lord, life just goes on. And ultimately, people didn't, and people don't. They let it go, and they go off to rule the rest of their days, and in comes the pride. Pride of life. That's what kills everyone. But if you stick to the scripture over and over and over and over again, and when a new wealth comes in, you humble yourself and you go back to the Bible and you remind yourself, who am I? The world doesn't revolve around me. Don't be so fucking cocky. Then it endures your life. And God's happy enough with you to let it endure. And who knows? Maybe quite a while indeed.